Hello guys, welcome back and happy new year. I'm going to continue with this series of videos about pulmonary hypertension. So today I'm going to talk about the pulmonary velocity acceleration time. Please don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start. In my channel you can find a very in-depth video about pulmonary hypertension. But let's remember some important bits. Pulmonary hypertension is defined as a mean arterial pressure of 25 millimeters of mercury as confirmed on right heart catheterization. Traditionally, the pulmonary arterial systolic pressure has been estimated on echo by utilizing the simplified Bernoulli equation from the peak tricuspid regurgitant velocity and adding this to an estimate of right atrial pressure. So the whole purpose of this measurement is estimating the right ventricular pressures. Right ventricular systolic pressure equals pulmonary artery systolic pressure in the absence of pulmonary stenosis and can be estimated with the formula derived from the Bernoulli equation. To apply this formula, you need to obtain the tricuspid regurgitation velocity and add to this an estimation of the right atrial pressure. There may be situations in which no tricuspid regurgitation is present or the signal is inadequate to obtain reliable measurements. In these cases, it is particularly valuable to look at the pulse wave Doppler signal of pulmonary flow. Using the pulmonary valve Doppler signal, we can also obtain alternative measurements to estimate the right ventricular systolic pressure. Alternative measures of increased right ventricular pressures are a short pulmonary velocity acceleration time and a notch right ventricular outflow. So what is and how can we obtain the pulmonary velocity acceleration time? We already know that the pulmonary velocity acceleration time is an alternative measurement in order to assess the right ventricular systolic pressure. Also called right ventricular outflow tract acceleration time, or pulmonary artery acceleration time is a non-invasive method to assess pulmonary hemodynamics. It's defined as the interval between the onset of systolic pulmonary arterial flow and peak flow velocity. So basically, the pulmonary velocity acceleration time it is the interval between the onset of flow and peak flow. In other words, the acceleration time is the time between the beginning of the flow and the peak velocity of the flow. On the left, we can see a normal pulse wave pattern of the right ventricular outflow tract. This normally has a dome-shaped envelope and, as you can see, is very symmetrical. However, in patients with pulmonary hypertension, there is rapid rise to peak resulting in shorter acceleration time, as you can see on the right-hand side image. Now, how can we obtain the pulmonary velocity acceleration time? First, you need to find the appropriate view. 
Normally, we get this measurement from the right ventricular outflow view from the parasternal long axis or from the parasternal short axis view at the aortic valve level. Second, place the sample volume just below the pulmonary valve cusps on the right ventricular side in the right ventricular outflow tract and then press pulse wave Doppler. So basically just place the sample volume at the tip of the leaflets and press pulse wave Doppler. Now measure at an expiration from the onset of flow to peak flow velocity. As pulmonary artery pressure increases, the acceleration time of the right ventricular ejection into the pulmonary artery shortens. In this picture, you can see the measurement from the onset of flow to the peak flow. Always use the average of 5 beats in atrial fibrillation. Heart rates outside of the normal range may reduce accuracy. If this is the case, a correction for heart rate may be used. Here you can see the correction formula. When pulmonary pressures measured invasively are around 25 millimeters of mercury, Changes in heart rate have no significant effect on acceleration time. An acceleration time of less than 105 milliseconds is considered a marker of raised pulmonary artery systolic pressure. Now let's talk about the pulmonary systolic notch. Increased pulmonary vascular resistance and pulmonary arterial stiffness can cause a reflection of waves which return towards the right ventricle during systole. This impedes right ventricular ejection and causes notching of the Doppler profile. The presence of a pulmonary systolic notch is considered a marker of raised pulmonary artery pressure. The presence of a pulmonary mid-systolic notch is more likely to represent increased pulmonary vascular resistance and poor vascular compliance in keeping with precapillary pulmonary hypertension rather than pulmonary hypertension due to left heart disease. Now that you know how to obtain the pulmonary velocity acceleration time, let's learn how to recognize the patterns. These are the pulmonary flow velocity patterns. The first one from left to right is how a normal pattern looks a very symmetrical pattern with a dome-shaped envelope. The second one is an abnormal pattern with a shorter acceleration time due to increased right ventricular pressures. And the third one is an abnormal pattern and this is how a systolic notch looks. You can find different normal values and that's going to depend on which guideline are you following. However, a pulmonary velocity acceleration time more than 120 milliseconds is considered normal and a pulmonary velocity acceleration time less than 105 milliseconds or the evidence of systolic notching is considered a marker of raised pulmonary artery systolic pressure. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So, see you on another day. Bye!